Aaron Meisner here with BioEnterprise, thanking you for your interest in our ongoing educational series on investment preparation. These videos are part of our Ag Insight Global program in partnership with the NRC and IRAP and part of our Feed Your Mind media series. This next segment features some wisdom from our own CEO, Dave Smartin, giving you an inside look at the perspective of investors and also some great tips on starting those investor conversations. If you joined us for the webinar or are interested in traveling with the Ag Insight Global program, Follow the link at the end of this video or reach out to me directly. My information will be on screen at the end as well. For now, enjoy this great content. Uh, this one is from our uh, CEO and president, uh, Dave Smartin. and he's gonna be talking about um, the investor perspective. So this is the, the, we're flipping this around on you. This is the other side. Um, Dave has uh, had a lot of experience with uh, investment from both sides and he's gonna give us a little bit about uh, the types of investors that exist out there uh, what it is that they're looking for and how we can connect with them. So we'll let Dave take that away. Hello everyone, my name is Dave Smart and I'm President and CEO of BioEnterprise. In my former life, I have been an investor in early stage companies and I've also done three startups and had to fund them. So when it comes to raising capital for early stage companies, that's an idea that's definitely not foreign to me. I understand what you're going through and I understand how much time and energy it takes. So let's talk about what investors are looking for because it can be a mystery at times. So first of all, there's a lot of different kinds of investors. So let's talk about some of those. Friends and family, you're all familiar with that. They're the ones that come in and provide you with small amounts of capital to move your business forward. Then you have angel investors and angel syndicates. An angel syndicate is just a group of angels that get together to do an investment as a single group, single entity. Family offices would be next. And in family offices, you have single family offices and you have multiple family offices. Single family offices are high net worth individuals that want to manage their wealth. Multiple family offices are a bunch of high net worth individuals that get together and they want to manage their wealth together. Uh, and that helps build leverage for them. The next step would be venture capital. And most people, uh, know what venture capital is. They have this understanding that we need venture capital. I need venture capital. We're going to talk more about that later because in many cases, venture capital is not what you need. Um, corporate investors, uh, you know, invest in venture capital arms and corporations that like to invest in or acquire uh, early stage companies. And then you have government. I'm not going to talk very much about government, uh, but I am going to talk about the others. So when you look at investors, um, there's a lot of commonality amongst them, and I think the one thing you have to look at is, you know, investors are looking at very similar things when they when they make their investments. So let's go through a, a small list or a, a highlighted list of what they might be looking for from your business. First and foremost, most investors are looking for a unique, disruptive technology or solution, uh, something that is going to change the way that things are currently done. Um, and as I said, it could be a technology, it can be a group of technologies that are put together, but the word disruptive is, is the key word. What I'm going to do, what I'm offering to investors is something that has never been done before. The second component is it's defensible. So it's patentable, uh, it has a unique position in the marketplace, the technology is not easily replicated, and therefore over a longer period of time, uh, you have a defensible position in the market. The third one is global. Um, the idea of having something that is going to sell in Canada or sell just in North America, while that sounds good, most investors are looking for technologies, solutions that are global in nature and global in applicability. Uh, a fourth thing would be uh, the path to marketplace. How quickly can you get your product into the market? Uh, you know, and, and even beyond that, how quickly can you make a profit? So. A lot of times in these early stage businesses, we see, you know, I need another six to 12 months before I'm going to start generating sales. And then I need, I need another 12 months in sales before I'm going to be profitable. You know, that all of a sudden you're at two years. Um, you need to have a reasonable path to the marketplace and a reasonable path to profit. Um, and certainly if it's, uh, if it's in that two year period, that's probably quite acceptable. But if you start getting into four and five years, then you're going to turn off the investors. Is the risk acceptable? So you look at all of these things that I've just mentioned, and they all get formula, uh, placed into formulas 
that calculate risk. And you have to have, at the end of the day, an acceptable risk profile for these investors to want to invest. So again, if your product is defensible and it's disruptive and you've got a short or reasonable path to marketplace or to profit, you're going to make some money um, and it's global in nature, then you're starting to get a very acceptable risk profile. You also have to look at things like how quickly can you get into distribution and markets? Uh, uh, how are you going to sell the product? Are you going to have direct sales force? Are you going to use distributors or OEMs and so on? So all those things help make up the, uh, uh, the risk assessment for these investors. And the last piece, which is could even be the most important piece, is personal relationship. You're going to meet with the investors on the first occasion, and you're going to go through a pitch. You're going to talk about your business. And he's going to establish an opinion about you. Because at the end of the day, when he places his money on the table, he's investing in you. So he has to like you. He has to believe in you. He has to to convince, be convinced that you're the right person to carry this business forward and you're going to make this business a success. So those are the key things that investors are looking for. Now, if you come back to the list of investors that I gave you earlier, you know, um, at various parts in your business, you're going to be looking for certain amounts of capital. You need to have a long range business plan that says that we need this much money at this point in time. Then we need another tranche of money at this point in time and so on. Because the investors that put money up today may not be the same kind of investors that put money up tomorrow. So angel investors, for example, uh, again, they're looking for uh, risk mitigation. They want a good deal. They want a low valuation that they can invest in, and they want to ride the wave as your business grows and grows and grows. When it eventually comes time for them to sell off their their uh, their holdings in your business, they want to know they've made a lot of money. So, um, you know, family offices are the very same as angels for the most part, and what they're looking for. And the angels and family offices are the ones that are typically going to invest in an earlier stage company. Venture capital firms, while uh, you know there's, there's exceptions to every rule, venture capital firms, just the nature of their model is that they want to invest in a company that's already generating revenues, they want to ride the growth phase, and then they want to exit from that. And that whole process is four or five years maximum. So if they're putting the money in today, they want to be out within four years. And will your business be generating enough revenues to get them out in four years? That's a big question. So that's when we come back to venture capital. A lot of times venture capital is not the right kind of investors. Uh, they don't have the right investment profile, if you will, to be investing in early stage businesses. All right. Uh, so just a couple items to follow up on you. Their faces back up here for you. All right. Uh, a couple of things. Um, something I want to touch on uh, that um, you know Dave touched on that was pretty important is um, uh, that a technology has to be disruptive. And I want to talk a little bit about the uh, buzzwords that we throw around and what some of those mean to some different people. And I think we see disruptive a lot. We also see innovative a lot. Um, and these are words that um, you know are very, very similar, uh, can mean something slightly different, whereas uh, innovation is a new way of doing something. Disruptive is really that market shattering, uh, you know, strategy changing methodology or, or product that's really, really upsetting the way that the market currently runs. Um, and I think uh, innovative happens a lot more often than disruptive, and they're both very, very important. Uh, but I also think it's important to, uh, if you're speaking to investors and using some of these words, um, make sure that you guys are both understanding the same thing out of what those words mean and what you're expecting of them. Um, because words like this tend to be, uh, especially in, in the uh, startup economy, tend to be tossed around a whole lot, and they can start to lose a little bit of meaning. So definitely uh, clarify your terms when you're talking and, and uh, make sure you're identifying your business in the correct way. Absolutely, and you're going to be able to do that by understanding what your competition is and, and how to, you know, how your technology is relevant or relative to, to those competitors. And, and essentially, that's going to tell you how disruptive or innovative it is. Um, I guess one of the things that speaks to me from Dave's Dave's uh, commentary is, you know, the importance of, of believing in yourself and, you know, being confident when you go into those meetings. Uh, you know, this is really, especially if it's a first meeting, it's a chance for you to to 
give a first impression and we all know how important those first impressions are so uh, to reiterate some of the things I've said before you really have to do your research know who your audience is if you can do a little bit of due diligence on the investor themselves if you're meeting them uh, you know get to know what they've invested in before and, and ask lots of questions um, at the same time you know you need to be prepared you need to be polished and you need to be confident and in order to be those things you, you really do have to do your research Excellent. So we're going to talk a little bit more about a couple of these things. So take a look here. Our next one. So um, just going a sorry, going a little bit beyond even uh, what Dave was speaking about. Um, so uh, when you're approaching investors, and this was really this was someone on our team. Um, uh, one of our analysts actually brought up this question when I was uh, preparing uh, the topics we were going to cover. And she said, um, how, how do you even get started? What do you, you know, where do I, where do I begin? So uh, I want to talk a little bit about how you're approaching investors, how to keep them talking, um, and really what the important landmarks are if you're at an event and, uh, and as I've said, shaking hands, because it's not just a firm handshake. Um, so I think some things that are really important, and this is feedback we get from investors quite a bit, um, is uh, you want to you wanna build a relationship first and foremost. So you go beyond the pitch. Um, it's not just about walking up to someone and telling them every detail about your journey so far, every detail about your product and every single feature that it's capable of doing. Um, you want to be a person. And what I mean by that is don't simply dump that vast amount of informational resources uh, on an investor. You're uh, creating, it's part of this goes along with brand. You're creating that connection that's going to let you get to the next step. I think you want to think about it as a conversation. So you have to do some listening. And then, you know, structuring your responses and, and the way you present uh, the idea or the opportunity so that it fits what your audience is looking for or what they're interested in. Absolutely. And we've kind of touched on this idea that you're using your first 10 seconds, you know, uh, that, that elevator pitch, as they call it. You're using your first 10 seconds really to set up the next five minutes. You capture their attention. Uh, you get the information you need from them. And you make those next few minutes a... a short yield productive conversation and really that five minutes is setting up the half hour sit down or the hour long meeting or whatever that next step may be between you and this um, you know potential investor uh, you really want to make the the best use of your time uh, and like like um, Jess was saying that includes both you know um, saying the right things but also asking the right questions um, we have on here ask the most important question are you currently investing um, and I think this is something we're going to get some information from one of our partners, uh, get more sales. And one of the things that they really talk about is valuing your time. And it's very easy at an event to be in a, a large series of unproductive conversations. So make sure that you're asking the right questions to make sure that you're putting your time into the, the right investors as well. Um, Absolutely. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, this is where that listening word comes in in uh, to be important. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but really, you know, it's important for any conversation you're having. But when you're when you're trying to fill a gap or get a better understanding of, of what this investor is, is interested in and what's really going to pique their interest, you really have to pay attention. Absolutely. And we have a little note down there as well. Make sure you have business cards. And I know we're touching on this quite a bit. I think what we're trying to get across is that it's very important, especially for network building at an event, um, that you have some way of representing yourself. Uh, chances are investors and other companies are meeting dozens, if not hundreds of people at each event they attend. And it's very difficult to store all of those names, phone numbers, email addresses by memory. Um, and the more chance you can give yourself of being um, you know, top of mind or at least in their database when you contact them again, uh, the better that that further contact is going to be received. Absolutely. And, and I think it even goes beyond just having the business card. I think, and we are going to talk about this a little bit later, but prompt follow up. You know, it doesn't make any sense to exchange business cards and then wait two weeks to follow up because to Aaron's point, there's a very good chance that there could be, you know, tens of hundreds of conversations that will have happened in that short period of time. And and you certainly don't want your investor to, to forget your face, your name or your or your product and technology offering. Right. And that kind of goes back to what I was speaking about near the beginning about really making sure you have the infrastructure to handle these communications that you're setting up and where that investment becomes very important. 
Absolutely. And I think, too, just one last thing, and it's the important of your your advisory team, your support team, your your, you know, the people who are going to help you sort of weed through all of these opportunities and talk about them. Um, in many cases, we encourage companies to have an advisory team. And if they don't have one, then they can utilize BioEnterprise to offer that service, even if it's just a simple you know, phone call. Hey, we have this opportunity to meet with an investor. Can you help us do a, a little bit of due diligence? B, help us prepare our documentation, and then C, maybe go through what the next steps or action items are. Uh, so I, again, just I, I wanted to reiterate that it is really important to take advantage of your of your team and your advisory service uh, providers, whether it be internal or external. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you learned some useful information. Again, my contact information will be up on the screen in just one second. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And keep your eyes open for more of these videos with a lot of our great content from the webinar and more on our Feed Your Mind page at bioenterprise.ca. Thanks for joining us.